Hi, fourth graders. I'm back with some more Farmer Boy by Laura Ingalls Wilder. We're going to be picking up on Saturday night. Remember that um, this book is is set up at the beginning, kind of like so you see kind of like you know a weekday, what what it's like on certain days, special days, um, what it's like during parts of their day. Um, so now we're on to Saturday night, and then you'll have this background. So when we, because remember it's just one year in the life of Amonza Wilder. And they had just um, filled the ice house, and now we're on Saturday night. So it starts on page 75, so please follow along while I read. That night was Saturday night. All day long, Mother had been baking, and when Almanza went into the kitchen for the milk pails, she was still frying donuts. The place was full of their hot brown smell and the weedy smell of new bread, the spicy smell of cakes, and the syrupy smell of pies. Mother takes the day during the day on Saturday to do all of her baking so that way she doesn't have to do any baking during the week so so that's the day that she gets all that done because remember she doesn't have these big industrial ovens right she just has small parts of the the heating stove um, that she can use for cooking as well so it's um, so she she has to do you know she she has a schedule on how she you know divides her her time um, making what she needs to make in the kitchen Amanda took the biggest donut from the pan and bit off its crispy end. Mother was rolling out the golden dough, slashing it into long strips, rolling and doubling and twisting the strips. Her fingers flew and you could hardly see them. The strips seemed to twist themselves under her hands and to leap into the big copper kettle of swirling hot fat. Until Mother's done this a time or two, right? Plump, they went to the bottom, sending up bubbles. Then quickly they came popping up to float and slowly swell. So they rolled themselves over, their pale golden backs going into the fat and their plump brown bellies rising out of it. They rolled over, Mother said, because they were twisted. Some women made a new fangled shape, round with a hole in the middle, but round donuts wouldn't turn themselves over. Mother didn't have time to waste turning donuts. It was quicker to twist them. Monza liked baking day, but he didn't like Saturday night. On Saturday, Saturday night, there was no cozy evening by the heater with apples, popcorn, and cider. Saturday night was bath night. So they only bathed once a week on Saturday night. And one of the main reasons was because the next day, Sunday, is when they go to church. So they need to be nice and clean before going to church. They've worked all week long, right? They've worked very hard. So they're gonna they're gonna clean up. Now, Almanzo still washes his hands and washes his face every day, but to do a full bath, it was on Saturday night. And they didn't have a bath like we have a bath. They didn't soak in a big tub. Their bath was just a, a, a bucket or a round barrel that they would stand in and it barely, you know, covered up almost to maybe just below their knees was how much water was in there. So it's um, quite a different experience, I'm sure, than your bath time. After supper, Almanzo and Royal again put their coats and caps and mufflers and mittens. They carried a tub from the wash tub outdoors to the rain water barrel. Everything was ghostly white with snow. The stars were frosty in the sky and only a little faint light came from the candle in the kitchen. The inside of the rain water barrel was coated thick with ice and in the center where the ice was chopped every day to keep the barrel from bursting, the hole had grown smaller and smaller. So they have this rain water barrel because remember they have to go to the pump to pump for their water for most of it. But they also have a rainwater barrel right near the house so they can use that to wash their dishes, they can use that to take a bath, so they don't have to go all the way up to the pump house to get the water from the well. Um, so this way they've got some water that's right there available to them. But they have to keep a hole in it, otherwise it would burst because ice swells, right? Water swells when it freezes. Royal chopped at it, and when his hatchet went through the, with an oozy thud, the water welled up quickly because the ice was squeezing it from all sides. It's odd that water swells when it freezes. Everything else gets smaller in the cold. Almanzo began dipping water and floating pieces of ice into the wash tub. It was cold, slow work, dipping through the small hole, and he had an idea. Long icicles hung from the kitchen eaves. At the top, they were a solid piece of ice, and then their pointed tips hung down almost to the snow. Almanzo took hold of one and jerked, but only the tip broke off. The hatchet had, fro had frozen to the porch floor where Royal had laid it, but Almanzo tugged it loose. 
He lifted it up in both hands and hit the icicles. An avalanche of ice came down with a splintering crash. It was a glorious noise. Hi, gimme, Royal said, but Almanzo hit the icicles again. The noise was louder than before. You're bigger than I be. You hit him with your fists, Almanzo said. So Royal hit the icicles with both of his fists. Almanzo hit them again with the hatchet and the noise was immense. Almanzo yelled and Royal yelled and they hit more and more icicles. Big pieces of ice were flying all over the porch floor and flying pieces pitted the snow. Along the eaves there was a gap as though the roof had lost some teeth. Mother flung open the kitchen door. Mercy on us, she cried. Royal, Almanzo, be you hurt? No, Mother, Almanzo said meekly. What is it? What be you doing? Almanzo felt guilty, but they had not really been playing when they had work to do getting ice for the bath water mother he said my land such a racket i never heard must you yell like comanches no mother Almanzo said mother's teeth chattered in the cold and she shut the door Almanzo and royal silently picked up the fallen icicles and silently filled the tub it was so heavy that they staggered when they carried it and father had to lift it onto the kitchen stove the ice melted while Almanzo greased his moccasins and Royal greased his boots. In the pantry, Mother was filling the six-quart pan with boiled beans, putting in onions and peppers and the piece of fat pork, and pouring squirrels of molasses over it, over it all. Then Almanzo saw her open the flour barrels. She flung rye flour and cornmeal into the big yellow crock and stirred in milk and eggs and things and poured the big baking pan full of the yellow-gray Ryan engine dough. You fetch the Ryan engine, Almanzo. Don't spill it, she said. She snatched up the pan of beans, and Almanzo followed more slowly with the heavy pan of Ryan engine. Father opened the big doors of the oven and the heater, and Mother slid the beans and the bread inside. They would slowly bake there until Sunday dinner time. So they could they they would start some of their baking overnight, right? And then it would it would just slowly slowly bake all day, and then when it was time for dinner, um, the next day, which remember is their lunch time, um, they would have that as part of their meal. Then Almanzo was left alone in the kitchen to take his bath. His clean underwear was hanging on a chair back to air and warm. The washcloth and towel and the small wooden pannikin of soft soap were on another chair. He brought another washtub from the woodshed and put it on the floor in front of the open oven door. He took off his waist and one pair of socks and his pants. Then he dipped some water from the tub on the stove into the tub on the floor. He took off his other pair of socks and his underwear and his bare skin felt good in the heat from the oven. He toasted in the heat and he thought, he might just put on his clean underwear and not take a bath at all. But Mother would look when he went into the dining room. So he stepped into the water. So you can see, right, there isn't very much water covering him. It basically goes up just past, just to his shins. And he's got to use a dipper and, like, pour the water over top. And you can see the two big cauldron or the two big water buckets, one on the stove and one down below. So that way he can mix the super hot water with some lukewarm water so he can take his bath. Um, so he stepped into the water. It covered his feet. With his fingers, he dug some of the brown, slimy, soft soap from the pannikin and smeared it on a washcloth, and then he scrubbed himself all over. The water was warm around his toes, but it felt cold on his body. His wet belly steamed in the heat from the oven, but his wet back shivered, and when he turned around, his back seemed to blister, and his front was very cold. So he washed as quickly as he could, and he dried himself and got into his warm underwaist and his woolly long drawers, and he put on his long woolen nightshirt. Then he remembered his ears. He took the washcloth again, and he scrubbed his ears and the back of his neck. He put on his nightcap. He felt very clean and good, and his skin felt sleek in the fresh, warm clothes. It was the Saturday night feeling. So that Saturday night feeling was clean and good, and his skin was nice and sleek and fresh in his warm clothes. It was pleasant. But Almanzo didn't like it well enough to take a bath for it. If he could have his way, he would have taken a wouldn't have taken a bath till spring. And that's because he would have he wait he they jump in the creek or in the water to take um, their baths in the spring, summer, and fall time. They bathe outside, right, um, with the water that's already available to them in, in like a creek. He did not have to empty his tub because if he went outdoors after taking a bath, he would catch cold. Alice would empty the tub and wash it before she bathed in it. Then Eliza Jane would empty Alice's, and Royal would empty Eliza Jane's, and Mother would empty Royal's. Late at night, Father would empty Mother's and take his bath. And the next morning, he would empty the tub for the last time. Almanzo went into the dining room in his clean, creamy white underwear and socks and nightshirt and cap, 
Mother looked at him and he went to her to be inspected. She laid down her knitting and she looked at his ears and the back of his neck and she looked at his soapy clean face and she gave him a hug and squeeze. There, run along with you to bed. He lighted a candle and padded quickly up the cold stairs and blew out the candle and jumped into the soft, cold feather bed. He began to say his prayers, but went to sleep before he finished them. And that's the end of Saturday night. I hope you're enjoying the book, and I will see you soon. Bye.